Hello. This session is about um, equipment. What type of equipment you needed, um, your basic actually equipment you needed to produce um, tailored garment, to produce your 19th century morning coat. Um, straight away, sewing machine. You cannot do without sewing machine. So I've got the basic, very old sewing machine, domestic sewing machine, which is, works absolutely fine do just a normal straight stitching, you don't need anything else. You don't need any more co complication in that. So as long as it works properly and you can adjust the teachings, then it's perfect. So yeah, got the domestic sewing machine and that's what I've been using. Now, the next part you will need to, do, um, to have is iron. So um, this is the iron um, I have at home. I'm not recommending that particular name or that particular make is that's what I had already. I will strongly advise you to have whatever iron you have, to have um, iron with the steam, because steam, this helps you. Um, we manipulate the fabric and do you know, press things. So, so yeah, if you have uh, even more basic than this is fine, but it's most important is that they have um, you know, the place where you can put water in there, which is great for steam. Um, if you, didn't have the um, iron and you are planning to buy, investigate in that and get a nice good iron where you can have like a little um, container as well where you can put water. Uh, really helps, really, really helps with have a good iron. So, but yeah, domestic iron, basic, absolutely fine. So that's what I have. And as we're talking about ironing, so the first thing I'm, um, you know, is you need to have is the iron board. Iron board is you know, you have, it's quite common to have in every, you know, domestic and um, every household to have your iron board. Um, it's easy to buy as well online. I looked, I checked, and um, so you just, you know, use what you have already at home. Just make sure your iron board, that the surface of your um, iron board is clean. And if you need to re, um, you know, um, cover it, and or um, wash it, you know, just do that because it's quite important that, you know, all your items is nice and clean. Um, the other um, things I will um, advise you to have, it's the um, iron board for the sleeve. So it's another thing you can buy separately. So my one is a um, professional one wow. and it's made of wood. And um, I several times, it's very old, and I several times just use it and I recover it, you know, with the um, fabric. And, but I've got as well, I've got a home, the one which is the massive one, and that's collapsible. It's not particularly something I will, uh, you know, I will use a lot, but if I don't have any other choice, I will use it. If you don't have the um, sleeve iron board, I will advise you to go, you know, to buy one, but buy the bigger size, so especially the head of the sleeve is here, it's wider because it's we if you're making it for the um, full size garment for the grown up person, then um, it's nicer to have when the iron box is slightly big. I will advise you to have all different sizes, but that would be the first thing I will advise you to have a slightly bigger size for your sleeve iron board, which is really, really helps you. Um, the next thing I will um, uh, what I have is just a cloth, cotton cloth, 100%. A lot of in in the past, a lots of um, people, even if you, you know, ask your fathers or grandfathers, they will use handkerchief, men's handkerchief, which is quite big to um, twine their trousers and so on. So, um, and you can have that exactly the same. But what I have here is just 100% um, muslin, some muslin cloth. And the weave, the dis difference between just a normal um, cotton, it's the, that the weave is more open. Can you see that it's more see-through? It's more see-through there. And I, I have about half a meter here, so you do need it more. And the reason I really like this one, because it's thin for start, and also I can, when you wet it, it's, uh, it contains a lot of um, water, but it's not in a way like this actually just where it's a layer of the water, but it really steams, steams away when you put the heat in there. 
on that flow, so really nice. So I really like working with this one. But you also can create a layer. So if you put two or three layers, if you need to have more, um, to cover your fabric with a more thicker layer, you know, then you can create that. And also you can have more deeper, um, and you can control the steam, you can control the, the, the wetness of the cloth as well by putting, um, putting different folding and creating different layers. In the same time, by having only one layer, it dries quite quick as well. So it just that's what you want. You don't want to constantly have your cloth always wet. So, so it gives you all that different, opportun different opportunity. So yes, if you have a chance to get a muslin, 100% muslin, go for it because it will last you for um, ages. Um, this one has been for 10 years. You just wash it, clean it, look after it, and you know, last you for life really. So that's what I use. The next part, which is really helps me and actually helps me with a lot of demonstration, is just this box. So um, it's just a normal carbon box, which is the um, shoe box. In particular, what I use in here, it's a box from the perfume. So they're quite nice and steady and strong. Um, I just covered with a little bit of felt and then covered with cotton. So it's natural fabric and it's been absolutely amazing tool to help me, you know, um, doing little stuff because I don't have anything else here in the house, you know, locked down and, you know, can't get other stuff. And that was the first thing I really, um, really liked. And um, you also can pin it because I've got um, some other you know, fabrics in there, you can pin it to that. Um, um, as it became like a cushion, like a hot cushion, and you can iron it on top and you can pin it to that, it's really hot, handy. Um, now, the, um, after ironing, after all this thing, the, the next part, the most important you will have is scissors. You know, it's, um, no one touches my scissors in my hands, no one touches. So you have a scissors which is got just a you know, nice good shear um, for the fabric. So, you know, they are, I look after them, I make sure I'm only using to cut the fabric, no one else touches them. So that's, um, you know, very, very um, good scissors. Whatever you like, whatever make you prefer, it doesn't matter really, as long as they're really nice. What I prefer as well is the light. Light is because, you know, because I have to cut quite a lot and not to have a, a strain on my hands, I like light scissors, but very sharp. Um, as well. So yeah, you can have all different sizes, but this one is just a standard and I use it for everything. Small one, um, um, little and pieces, you know, so to cut little threads and everything. Again, as long as sharp and nice, uh, nice to, to have them because I don't use really a picker. Um, it's something that I just um, not been trained to use it. Um, some of the lots of people do use, are just very cautious about them because So I use little uh, snips like that. And if I need to unpick something or cut something, so so they'd be absolutely um, great. And of course, the those scissors, which is paper scissors, they usually you know the old scissors, which is now no longer used. I'm um, them and um, change them into the paper scissors, and they are just being um, absolutely fine for that. So I don't mix, as you see, they're all different colors. I don't mix my paper paper scissors and my fabric scissors. Definitely don't cut um, the fabric your paper with the fabric scissors. So, so this is no no no. So make sure and you look after them. And then of course, thimble. The thimble is one of the um, important stuff in tailoring. You have to protect your skin. You have to protect um, you know, your fingers. And um, depends what um, hand you're using. If your right hand or your left hand, you um so you use if you your right hand so it's a middle finger on your right hand if your left hand is middle finger on your left hand so you're using it some a lot of people do use um you know and put the fingers on several fingers to help them so it depends how you hold your needle so so that way it's you just need to choose what fit and what type of thimble you want so they've got different Thimbles, which is the open thimble, which is tailored thimble, very standard traditional tailored thimble. Um, this one is more dressmaking thimble, and you know, more a female than the women will usually use that you uh, use them. But to be honest, you know what? I don't care what thimble you use, 
as long as you use and one it suits you uh, in the way you actually it's um you know what's is what's is appropriate for you and for your fingers i don't like those um fingers like this if my um, skin doesn't breathe in them and also i've got nails they stuck in there so it doesn't go through when it grows as well so i prefer more open one so this one so i like this one because you can um so if i can closer because you can open it to different sizes and so you can so when i put my fingers so i can close it as tight as wanted or open as 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 much as i I want and that way you know and you can turn around the way any way you want so if I sew in something that way that's protected if I'm sewing something that way and I have to push it for example that way then I can turn it either way and it's, it fits absolutely fine so I really like this finger because um, I can really um, um, use it there. my only um, down to this thimble is sometimes the thread patches here in the between it's quite annoying um, so you have to be very careful when you are um, sewing so there's another one plastic one plastic this one is I really like this one and I've been using this quite a lot you will see in my um, films uh, so it's quite nice because it opens as well especially if it gets um, hot or you know it it's gets a size and bigger size as well um, so that's that's very nice and it's breathable so that being nice, uh, and I think I used it really nice. Love, absolutely love leather thimbles. I think the leather thimbles is the best, and you know they, they you just don't feel. I thought it's very light, and you don't feel on your fingers at all. So they're very nice in there. So they've got different type, type of um, shapes and levers. So here's with the metal one, um, covers in all different ways. You can buy them easily. Yeah. My only down with this type of um, thimbles is the leather stretches quite a lot. So I ended up doing a lot of alteration from the seam by making it smaller and smaller and smaller because it stretches. But yeah, I love, I love um, you know, leather thimbles. So yeah, so that's any thimble, whatever thimble you have, as long as you protect your fingers, it's absolutely fine. So those are thimbles. And then of course, um, needles. So needles is, is important. Um, I would never advise you to use old needles because they can just damage your fabric and be harder to go, sometimes rust in them, they can be banned. So it's important that you are, if you have a chance to buy a new pack, get the new pack. So this one type of um, needles I usually um, recommend for my students to, um, to have. So this one is the sharp needles and they are number seven and number nine is that quite standard one because they're nice and thin um you know so you can get them as a pack um so very very good needles but believe it or not my one of my favorite needles is those ones and they've been used for millinery you can see that so it's um used for millinery the reason i really like them for a more heavier fabric not thinner but heavier fabric and they do do lots of um tucking when you tuck through you do tailors tucking there are some of them not all of them but you know those it, the sides that side and that side they very thin and very long and they're very strong as well so you and so when they do do lots of sewing so they are absolutely fun because you can grip it you can thread your um thread easily and yes yeah, so they can just go, go through love love them so yeah, if you have a chance to, to order them, you know, yeah, you can order um, good to, to use them. I would not recommend to use them in the middle one because it's quite thick and chunky. I don't use um, chunky needles. You know, it's with total different um, sewing, those type of needles. And of course, it's um, just a standard um, demand, you know, the needles you can buy in every shop, sewing shop, you can buy and get the pack of needles. So this one was in my local shop and um, you know, all different sizes you can have in them. So as long you, you know, as long they've got thin um, uh, long needles there, uh, you know, just use them. Don't use very thick or chunky needles. So yeah, that would be absolutely fine. As I said, it doesn't really matter you know as long as you've got the the right size of the needle what make 
that's that's what I imagine. So those are needles. Now chalk. Um, I so this one is type of chalk. I usually use Taylor's chalk, um, and um, prefer you know white or yellow. Usually, if it's a dark fabric, um, try to use only white. I, I actually try to use only white if it's possible. Um, you know, very rare I have to use yellow, but probably just to identify different lines if I needed to. But um, I do have other colours like pink and light blue, but don't really use them in tailoring. So the white um, tailored um, chalk has been, this one's been perfect. They've got other um, type of, you know, you can buy in the more in the shops now. So this one is just a little container where you can put chalk powder inside. Um, so it's a roof refiller, so you can buy the refiller and then you can um, draw on the fabric. It's nice, you know, it's nice and clean. You don't need to sharpen all the time your um, your chalk. I still find it disappears too fast, in my view. But I use sometimes if I needed to, but I will still, if I had to choose, Taylor's chalk would be the, the, the priority. Now, um, tape measure. That tape measure is really difficult to make anything. So um, I have tape measure, which is in centimeters and in inches in both. So um, I teach mainly my students in centimeters, but I do occasionally use inches um, as well. And I found it's that, um, especially young generation, they understand centimeters more. And relate more because that's what they've been teaching um, them at school. So yes, you know, I use them both. It's good to have tape measure with the um, both sides. And of course, you know, um, any different type of rules that there are um, always helps. So whatever helps, so just the straight rules, you know, and I've got L square as well. So, so you can, whatever rules you, rules you have, um, shapes and things, it always helps. Finding this one is quite, um, handy when you do put your um, seam allowance so you can uh, measure exactly so like 2.5 um, to or one inch depends what you know you use and then you can guide and it's quite, quite nice and um, helps you to be more precise so these little tools are um, you know very very good and of course um, needles pins so pins are you know, different type of pins. I've got lots of them in the box like that. Um, I always lose them, constantly have to buy more and more. So, so yeah, I've got, got two um, different type of needles. One is like that with the glass head. And, you know, mainly I use just a normal pins with just a metal pin. The reason is I use you know, um, mainly a metal one is because when they do iron and, this, and by accident, the pin goes under the iron, it would not melt. So that's why I would not advise you to use um, pins with the plastic heads, you know, and sometimes it leaves the marks as well. So, so with that, uh, I would not recommend that. So yeah, normal standard, you know, um, things like that with the, um, it's absolutely fine. The glass one I do use, this is the glass one. I do use, um, so again, I, I prefer glass one to the plastic because, you know, again, if it comes under the iron, it would not melt. Um, but the reason I use it, because sometimes in the fabric, when you need to fit certain type of fabric, which is like felt and things like that, so it doesn't lose your needle, it doesn't use it, so it doesn't lose your pin. Uh, and that's why, so those big, again, those, those pins are more used for millinery because they're quite long and strong and got the glass pane, so they are um, absolutely excellent to um, to use it. So for all different things, but yeah, mainly I use the metal one. Right, the next would be is wax, bee wax. So the bee wax, um, you can get lots of tailors do buy um, and use the bee wax. Personally, I'm not really fond of it, but I do use occasionally. The reason I don't use so much, well, let me tell you what is it for, is you, you know, when you are ready to some, do some sewing, um, you know, hand sewing, and your thread is, um, you know, need to be straightened and maybe got together and stacked, and sometimes it 
the way the wave is going on the thread is need to be more spreading. So you go, you take your thread, so for example, I've got here. So you've got your thread and then you push it through the wax like that. And that gives you in the wax thread, which is, you can use it and it's much straighter that and you know, and that's you know better for when you go and start doing any typing or um or certain stitches. Um, as I said, personally, um, don't use it as much. Again, the reason is because when you start ironing things, um, you know, the wax will melt and go in the cloth. Certain cloth, it doesn't matter, but other cloths, um, more finer cloth, more, you know, it's um, um, darker or lighter, it leaves little dots or lines from the thread. Um, you know, and the wax, wax will melt and leave the um, oily little marks in there, which is that's why I, I just think yeah, I use a lot of the time such expensive cloth. I uh, just think it is not worth for me to, you know, spoil with the wax. That's that's why. But occasionally I do use, occasionally it does help. So certain things, um, you know, to use wax. But if you don't have it, it's not a big deal, really. Um, I think. That's it. Yes, one thing is left is the mannequin. Strongly advise you to have mannequin. Just any mannequin. So no you in lockdown and it's very difficult to to get a male mannequin. Um, but if you do have a mannequin, it will really help. So as long as it's the to the you know the right size human's body size. Um, if it's a female mannequin, you can pad it up. You can, you know, to change the shape to the um, men's um, shape, and you can make it bigger size as well by padding the mannequin, um, and you know, make it bigger shoulder, make it bigger chest, waist. It all can be padded up, but it's extremely important to have a mannequin because it helps you just make it that little things when you start making especially for colors and sleeves and check all how it all hangs together it's it's important to put on on a mannequin if you don't have mannequin it's um then you have to have someone um in your household um your friends your mom your dad someone who can have that similar size to you know you can put you know your garment on that person just to try just to fit the sleeve or to fit the um Color. So yes, that would be strongly advise you to have to have the um, a mannequin for that. And um, I think that's it. Thank you very much for listening, and I see you next time. Bye.